pH calculations for weak acid strong base titrations and uh, analogously weak base strong acid titrations. That's going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll leave a link in the description for you can find those courses. Now, this lesson is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout this school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so weak acid strong base titrations. This is the worst of it. As far as any kind of pH calculations you might ever see, this is the absolute pinnacle in terms of how bad it can get. Uh, so if you kind of take a look, there are really five fundamental pH calculations we've seen so far. So strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base, and buffers. And it turns out that every titration calculation is gonna turn into one of these five. And so essentially, just like we did with the strong acid, strong base titrations in the last lesson, we're gonna take a reaction that goes to completion, and this one's gonna to go to completion because we've got a base that is strong in our acid-base reaction. And one, we're gonna run it to completion. We're gonna do a limiting reagent problem, see what's left, and based on what's left, we're gonna figure out which of these methods is appropriate. So just to review. So for a strong acid solution, where it's just a strong acid, so you just take the negative log of your acid concentration to get your pH. For a strong base, you just take the negative log of your hydroxide concentration to get the pOH and subtract from 14. So for weak acid and weak base, we had some shortcuts for the weak acid. So it involves the Ka and the acid concentration for the weak base. Shortcut for calculating hydroxide involved Kb and the base concentration. And then finally, if you've got both weak acid and conjugate base, so we'll use the henderson hasselbach uh, to calculate the pH of that solution. And these are your five fundamental types. So, and we're gonna see examples of all five of these involved with weak acid strong base or weak base strong acid titrations, as we'll see here. So, but we're gonna take the same approach we did in the last lesson. We're gonna run this reaction to completion and for reactions that go to completion, again, we need moles. And once again, if molarity is equal to moles over the volume in liters, then rearrange that moles is equal to molarity times the volume in liters. So, and again, I will be doing this all in moles. So for those of you that have you know, done this with millimoles, I apologize, I will be using moles exclusively throughout this lesson. So this first point really isn't part of the titration. We haven't added any strong base yet. All we have is just a weak acid solution. And for a weak acid solution, we have a nice lovely shortcut that allows us to calculate the H plus concentration. And that's precisely what we're going to use here. So we got the H plus concentration equals the square root of Ka times HA, and so in our case, that is Ka of HF is provided as 6.8 times 10 to the negative four, and the concentration of our weak acid is 0.1 molar. So, and this will get us our H plus concentration. And so if we take 6.8 times 10 to the minus four times 0.1 is 6.8 times 10 to the minus five, and then we'll take the square root of that, and we'll get 0.00825. Lost a zero there almost. Cool, and then the pH is simply going to be the negative log of this. So we'll take the negative log of my last answer and get 2.08. Cool, so what we can see here then is we're gonna kind of summarize how we get the pH at different points on a titration curve for a weak acid strong base titration. And for that initial point right there, we can see that you just have a weak acid. And so it's just gonna be square root of Ka times the acid concentration. Okay, so that's the initial point. So again, not really properly part of a titration, but so, you know, technically it is a point, I guess, on the curve, so we'll include it. So, uh, but now let's see what happens when we start adding some sodium hydroxide. So first one, we're gonna add 25 milliliters. And, uh, and again, this reaction is gonna to go to completion since sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So again, you mix an acid to base. If either are strong or they're both strong, reaction is going to completion and it's a limiting reagent problem. And to do this, we need to know how many moles of each we have so we can figure out which one is the limiting reagent and figure out what's left when this reaction is done. And so in this case, we'll take again that molarity times liters to get moles for both of these. And so in this case for the HF, we'll take 0.1 molar times 0.1 liters, so 100 milliliters is 0.1 liters, and conveniently enough, that's 
moles. And then for the NaOH, we'll take 0 0.1 molar times 0 0.025 liters and get 0 0.0025 moles. All right, so let's get this off the board. All right, so in this case, we can see that we definitely have fewer moles of NaOH. These react in a one-to-one -one ratio, so the NaOH is going to run out first. And in this case, we'll lose all of it. So minus 0 0.0025. Since these react in a one-to-one -one ratio, we're also gonna lose 0 0.0025 moles of the HF as well. However, we're also going to gain 0 0.0025 moles of sodium fluoride. So with the strong acid, strong base titration, the salt we created was a neutral salt. It wasn't going to affect the pH and we ignored it entirely. But this is not a neutral salt. So the sodium ions are negligible, being a group one or group two metal ion, in this case group one, but the fluoride ions are not negligible. They're not the conjugate base of a strong acid. They're the conjugate base of a weak acid. And as a result, they really are a base. And so sodium fluoride is a basic salt. It's gonna affect the pH and we have to keep track of it. So we didn't have any in our solution to begin with here, but we definitely have some now. So in this case, no NaOH left, that's for sure. So, but we can do this math in our head. So 0 0.0025 moles of the sodium fluoride, and then 0 0.01 minus 0 0.0025 is 0 0.00. Oh, you know what? I meant to write that in red. Let's be color consistent here. So when this reaction is done now, it's gone to completion, what's left in our solution? Well, we have a weak acid and we have its conjugate base. And when you have a weak acid and its conjugate base in the solution together, that could be a buffer, as long as it's within a 10 to one ratio. But even if we're outside the buffer range, we are still going to use the henderson hasselbach to perform the calculation. So this one's not outside the buffer range, this actually is a buffer. But even if we were you know, outside the boundaries of pKa plus or minus one, where we had either more than 10 times the HF as compared to F minus or vice versa, we're still gonna use the henderson hasselbach And so in this case, that's the nature of our calculation here. So pH equals pKa plus log A minus over HA. And so pH equals the negative log 6.8 times 10 to the minus four. So negative log of the Ka value, that's what pKa means, P means negative log. So, and then plus log. So what's nice here, so is that this is the henderson hasselbach proper and stuff like that, but we talked about this uh, in the, the section on buffers, the lesson on buffers, that the ratio of the molarities is also equal to the ratio of the moles. And so I'm actually not gonna use molarities here because I don't have molarities. And since it's also equal to the ratio of the moles, I can just look at this as the ratio of the moles of A minus over the moles of HA, and that ratio is the same. Again, moles and molarity are not necessarily the same thing, but the ratio of moles over moles it will be the same ratio as molarity over molarity, since it's the same volume of the total solution. And so in this case, this is the more convenient form because that means I don't have to turn these moles back into molarities before I put them in here. So otherwise I'd have to divide by the total volume of the solution for both these, but if I'm dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same total volume, it cancels out anyways. And this is much more convenient way to, to process this calculation. And so in this case, we'll take the 0 0.0025 moles over the 0 0.0075 moles. So, and then do some plugging and chugging here. So in this case, we're gonna get negative log of 6.8 times 10 to the negative four plus the log in parentheses. 0 0.0025 divided by 0 0.0075 and my parentheses. And we're gonna get 2.69, I'll round that to 2.7. Cool, so technically this point is somewhere right about here. So, and we use the henderson hasselbach to do this right here. So it turns out we're gonna have the equivalence point up here. And it turns out once we get to the equivalence point, we're gonna to have to find a new way to calculate pH. But it turns out after the initial point and before that equivalence point, anywhere 
in between, even if you're outside the buffer range, you can still use the Henderson Hasselbach. And I say can still use, I'd highly recommend you use the Henderson Hasselbach. And maybe we'll just do this ratio of moles here to calculate your pH. It's gonna work anywhere along the way. And the idea is, you know, you're still gonna have some HF left over on your way to the Coleman's point. You'll have formed some of the conjugate base at the same time. And so with, by having both weak acid and conjugate base in your solution, that's when the Henderson Hasselbach will get you the pH. All right, so this is the next point. We're gonna move this on now to 50 milliliters. And this is definitely gonna change some things now. So let's, let's just start over. All right, so we're gonna start this one over. Now before we do though, quick word to the wise here. So if you notice, we've got the same molarity for our weak acid and strong base. And so with the, them being the same molarity, and this is pretty common in a Gen Chem problem. So to get to the equivalence point would therefore require the same volume as well. So, and in this case, if we start with 100 milliliters of HF, then it's gonna take 100 milliliters of the same concentration of NOH to get to the equivalence point. Well, obviously we're not at the equivalence point, but we're exactly halfway there. And if you recall, at your half equivalence point, we learned this on the titration curve a couple lessons ago, that is where pH equals pKa. And so in this case, we might just be tempted, you know, if we realize we're at the half equivalence point, we'll, be, well okay, negative log of that guy right there is 3.2, so the pH is 3.2, done. And if you can recognize this quickly, it will save you a ton of time. But if you can't recognize it quickly, you're still gonna uh, make it to the right answer here. So let's take a look. So this time now we've got 50 milliliters, so 0 0.05 liters of NaOH. And in this case, uh, 0.1 times 0.05 is 0 0.005 moles. What we're gonna start with here. NaOH is still the limiting reagent. We're still gonna lose all of it. So minus 0 0.005. Five, still reacting in a one to one to one ratio. So we're gonna lose 0 0.005 moles of HF, but gain 0 0.005 moles of the NAF. And when the dust settles, there's no NaOH in our solution. However, we now have 0 0.005 moles of F minus and 0 0.01 minus 0 0.005 is 0 0.005. And you can see here that we have both weak acid and conjugate base in our solution. So you might treat it as a buffer. And again, I'll do it as a ratio of moles. So I'm just gonna take for granted the fact that I already calculated out the negative log of 6.8 times 10 minus four to get 3.17, i.e. approximately 3.2. But in this case then, plus log of A minus over HA, that's gonna be 0.005 over 0.005. So, and when your A minus and HA concentrations or moles are equal, that ratio comes out to one, and the log of one is zero, and this term effectively cancels out. And you're just gonna be left with pH equal to 3.17 which I'm just gonna make down to one decimal place, pH of 3.2. So if you can recognize quickly that you're at the half equivalence point, you can actually save yourself a ton of time. And you'd, you know, you're gonna get here eventually anyways, but if you just realize, oh, I'm at the half equivalence point, pH equals pKa, life will be so much better for you. Now, one thing to note, this was easier to recognize that we were at that half equivalence point, once again, because these two molarities are equal, then I know that it would be equal volumes at the equivalence point, and therefore half the volume would be halfway to the equivalence point. So, but if these molarities weren't equal, this might be harder to recognize maybe up until you get to this point and realize that, oh, that's exactly half the moles of the moles of HF or something along those lines. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Notice we're still in this buffer range and still use the Henderson Hasselbach to do our pH calculation. All right, so the next one here, we're gonna have now 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. And in this case, they're both 0.1 molar, and now we've added the same volume of both. We have added chemically equivalent amounts. We are now at the equivalence point. So 
And it turns out, for a strong acid, strong base titration, the equivalence point is the easiest point to calculate the pH, pH 7. But for a weak acid, strong base, or weak base, strong acid titration, it is the hardest point to calculate the pH. And we'll see why here in just a little bit. So, all right, so 0.1 molar, 100 milliliters again is 0.1 liters. And we've got 0.01 moles of the base as well. All right, and so they both are the limiting reagent. We're gonna run out of both of these. So minus 0.01 here, minus 0.01 here, plus 0.01 here. And when the dust settles here, we don't have any HF left in our solution. We don't have any NaOH left in our solution, but we do have 0.01 moles of sodium fluoride. And again, it's the fluoride part of this that is basic. And that's the only thing in our solution now affecting pH. Because we don't have both HF and F minus, we can't use Henderson Hasselbach. All we have is just F minus. And you have to know he's a base. Well, if you know he's a base, well then you gotta ask yourself one question. Is he a strong base or a weak base? Well, he isn't a strong base. He's not NaOH or LiOH or BaOH2, any of the group one or two metal hydroxides. It's not even a hydroxide. So he's definitely not a strong base, which means he's a weak base. And our shortcut for solving this Hydroxide equals the square root of Kb times the base concentration. And this is why this is such a big pain in the butt. We need a Kb value. Well, we don't have one. We have the Ka of the conjugate acid. So we need the Kb now instead, not the Ka. So you might recall that Ka times Kb equals Kw. And so Kb equals Kw over Ka, and that's what we're gonna to use to solve for this. So in this case, if we take one times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 6.8 times 10 to the negative four, we're gonna get a Kb of 1.47 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, now we got a Kb. Well, we got another problem here. We need a base concentration. Well, we have the number of moles of the base, but we don't have a molarity of the base. And so the molarity of the base is moles over liter. Well, we got 0.01 moles, but how many liters of solution do we have? Well, we've combined 100 milliliters of HF and 100 milliliters of NaOH for a total of 200 milliliters of solution. That's 0 0.2 liters. So our concentration of base 0.01 over 0.2. It's 0.05 molar. Cool, and so now we have the base concentration and the Kb, and we can plug them in to get hydroxide and then take the negative log to get the POH and go from there. Now, one thing you could do is you don't actually have to solve for these separately if you didn't want to. So what you could do Let's just say the hydroxide, instead of plugging in the Kb of 1.47 times 10 to the minus 11, you could just realize that it's equal to Kw over Ka. And so you could just take 1 times 10 to the negative 14 all over 6.8 times 10 to the negative 4, substitute it in right there for you. And then instead of, you know, solving for the base concentration, plug it in 0.05, you could just take that 0.01 moles over 0 0.2 liters and do it that way. So whether you wanna solve for the Kb and the base concentration and then plug those numbers in here or just actually make them all part of the, you know, the, a single calculation, it's totally up to you. Whichever one seems easier to you. Personally, I like actually solving for them separately and then plugging them in, but it will work out either way. All right, so I'm actually gonna do it that way. So we got the 1.47 times 10 to the negative 11 times the 0.05 and then we're gonna take the square roots and get 8.57 times 10 to the negative seven. We'll take the negative log to get the POH. We got a POH of 6.07. And we'll subtract from 14 to get the pH. 
I highly recommend you use your calculator to pull that off. We're going to get 7.93. which I will make and round and say is approximately 7.9. So at the equivalence point, the pH is 7.9. My first question for you is, does this actually make sense? Well, in a weak acid strong base titration, we learned a couple lessons ago that the pH is gonna be a little bit basic, usually in the seven to 10 range, and yeah, that fits right in there nicely. And so we see here at the equivalence point, we can't any longer use Henderson-Hasselbach but we have a shortcut, since all there is is a weak base in your solution, well, we know the shortcut for finding the pH of a weak base, Kb times the base concentration. All right, well, what's true past the equivalence point? Well, we're gonna have a new way to calculate pH when we're beyond the equivalence point. So we've got you know, just a weak acid at the very beginning before the titration's really started. Anywhere up to the equivalence point, past that point, past the initial point, but up to the equivalence point, is just Henderson-Hasselbach. At the equivalence point, just a weak base, there's our shortcut. Okay, so then what are we gonna do after the equivalence point? Well, let's take a look. All right, so now we've got 120 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. We're definitely past that equivalence point. And find out how many moles that is. We'll multiply by 0.12 liters here. So 0.1 molar times 0.12 liters. It's gonna be 0.012 moles. And so in this case, now we can see that we definitely have less HF than NaOH, and HF will be our limiting reagent. And so we're gonna lose all of the HF. One to one ratio means we'll lose the same amount of NaOH and gain same amount of NaF. And so in this case, we've got no HF left in our solution. We're gonna have 0 0.002 moles of our strong base there. And then we're gonna have 0.01 moles of NaF in our solution as well. And so the question is, okay, which of the five types of standard problems, strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base, or buffer, is this going to be? What are we gonna to use to calculate the pH here? Well, there's no such thing as a strong base, weak base solution that you've learned. Now the truth is this, unless you had like a super duper, 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 duper tiny amount of the strong base compared to weak base or something like that, so, and that's not the case here, but it, you know, that would be the only time that might happen and not something you're likely to ever encounter. And so in this case though, with having both strong base and weak base, it's kind of like, you know, being, playing tug of war. And on my team in the tug of war is a mosquito. Well, how much does the mosquito help me? Not much. What if I told you there's a hundred mosquitoes on my team? Well, they're still not helping me. Like, just mosquito hopefully is not doing a whole lot compared to me here. Same thing here. We've got a strong base, we've got a weak base. And the idea is that compared to the strong base, the weak base doesn't really do much. And we are simply just going to ignore the sodium fluoride in the solution. We're to treat this as just as if it were a strong base solution. And that's what we're gonna do beyond that equivalence point. And so in this case, we just wanna calculate the POH as the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. And we do have to remember that this is a hydroxide concentration, not a number of moles, which is what we have right now. And so we're gonna have to turn moles into molarity by dividing by the total volume in liters of the solution. And so in this case, POH is gonna equal the negative log of 0 0.002 moles all over 220 milliliters is 0 0.22 liters. So we'll take negative log, parentheses, 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.22, parentheses. We're gonna get 2.04 for the POH. Which means our pH will subtract from 14. So 14 minus my last answer is 11.96. Which I'm gonna round to 12.0. And now we've seen that once you get past that equivalence point, you're just going to ignore the weak base that you have in conjunction with your strong base. And when you have a strong base solution, you just take the negative log of the hydroxide concentration to calculate your pOH and subtract from 14 to get your pH. So, and this is how the curve works. Again, your initial point, you got just weak acid. Got a shortcut for that. 
anywhere after that initial point, but up to the Coulomb's point, you'll have both weak acid and conjugate base, and we'll use Henderson Hasselbach. Right at the half, I'm sorry, right at the equivalence point, all of your weak acid will have been neutralized. You'll have only the weak conjugate base left in your solution. And for a weak base solution, we got a shortcut for that. And then finally, beyond the equivalence point, we'll have both strong base and weak base, and we'll just ignore the weak base and just take the negative log of the weak, I'm sorry, just take the negative log of the strong base concentration. Have to turn it, make sure you turn it back into a concentration, not just moles, to get the pOH, and then subtract from 14 to get the pH. And so that's weak acid, strong base. You really got four different regions. You might have to do a pH calculation with four different methods for calculating it. And it's totally analogous if you got a weak base, strong acid. Let's take a look. All right, so we're not gonna work out any of the calculations per se. So what I am gonna show you how you set them up and just show you how it's analogous to what we saw with a weak acid, strong base. But with a weak base, strong acid, so at your initial point, before you've actually started the titration, well, all you have is really a weak base then. And if all you have is a weak base, well, we have a shortcut for that. The hydroxide is equal to the square root of the Kb times the base concentration. All right, so before your titration is ever going, all you have is weak base. Got a shortcut for that. Just like back over here with weak acid, strong base titrations, before the titration, all you have is a weak acid, and we had a shortcut for that. All right, so by the time you reach the equivalence point here, you will have neutralized all of your weak base, and you'll have no, you know, no strong acid left in the solution either. All you'll have is the salt. That's your product. And that salt is, in this case, not going to be a basic salt anymore. It's going to be an acidic salt. And, so, and it's not a strong acid, so it's weak acid by default. And for a weak acid, well, we got a shortcut for that. So at the equivalence point here, H plus equals the square root of Ka times your acid concentration. And that's again for the equivalence point. And just like we saw in the last example, everywhere up into the equivalence point, you're gonna have some of your weak base left over and you'll have formed some of the conjugate acid and you effectively have a buffer And you can use the Henderson Hasselbach to calculate your pH. Now, technically, again, for any buffer, you could use the Ka expression or the Kb expression as well. So, but again, for buffers, we t we generally tend to like, you know, telling you to use the Henderson Hasselbach. And so, for a weak base, you're probably going to be given a Kb value, not a Ka value. And so, being given a Kb, if you wanted the pKa, well, the first thing you'd have to do is find the Ka, since Ka times Kb equals Kw, and then take the negative log, and you could use that in your Henderson Hasselbach anywhere along the way here. So initial point, only weak base. Equivalence point, only weak acid. Anywhere in between buffer. And then finally, just like we saw, once you go past the equivalence point, so you're going to have definitely formed some uh, weak acid, but you're going to have excess strong acid left over. And if you have both strong acid and weak acid, then we're just going to ignore the weak acid. And so for anywhere past this point, we're just going to look at that excess strong acid turn it back into a molarity so we can take the negative log of that molarity and get the pH. And it is totally analogous for these weak base strong acid titrations, how you calculate pH to what we saw with the weak acid strong base titrations as well. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a thumbs up button is pretty much the best thing you can do to support the channel. If you're looking for practice on general chemistry in general or acid bases specifically or titrations, take a look at my general chemistry master course. A free trial is available. I'll leave a link in the description. Happy studying.